Previously on Persona 4 Arena Ultimax. H hello What? Ah! Kanji-kun? I mean, um, Kanji. <laughs> no! I take it all back! <laughs> and now back to kicking monkey ass! Hello! This is Sneaky B, back with some more Persona 4 Arena Ultimax. We last left off, we completed Kanji. Well, we didn't complete it, but we got the we got the joke ending, and then we got to the TV continued of Kanji's story, and it was fucking hilarious. <laughs> it was so funny. Kanji is the fucking best. So I asked you guys, um, out of these four, which ones you want me to, to play next? Um, and you guys, most of you said Naoto. Unfortunately, it turns out, uh, uh, Naoto doesn't. If I play Naoto, I don't. I can't progress the to to getting the final story that I need to, so I can actually get past the to be continued. So, unfortunately, I have to play as one of these three. Um, uh, so I'm, so I'm not gonna play. I, I will play Naruto, but just not now. I, I, I want to be able to to get past the to be continued thing, you know. Um, so between these three, the the second place winner was uh, Akihiko. So that wor works for me, and I I'm kind of curious to see why he's uh looks like this now because seriously I mean if anyone's not played Persona 3 look what he looks like in Persona 3 and what he looks like now it's fucking ridiculous like I mean he used to be a I mean he would he would uh when he fought in your party he boxed I guess you know he would use his fists and everything um and I mean I, I, he sort of enjoyed fighting but I like I didn't think he was like I don't know he, he seems his personality seems to have changed a lot so Let's see what happened. <laughs> it looks like he's been using a lot of steroids. <laughs> South America. I'm Alan. a long way from home. Oh shit! Oh damn! Is it? It's like the star of an action movie. Oh, no. are ninjas gonna come out? I'm alone. Oh my god! <laughs> Am I like in a post-apocalyptic way? Damn. I do. Is this? Is that how you walk around now, Akihiko? Just without a shirt on, with a big fucking cape over yourself. Ever since I left, ever since I left Japan, I've been constantly searching for places to test my strength. Before I knew it, I went up on the a ass end of the globe. Oh damn, he's got some badass tunes going. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I actually recognize this song from Persona 3. As I walk down a dark alley, a, dr a dry wind blows. I can see people inside the buildings, but I don't sense any life here. The zombies have come. <laughs> what? Just because it's quiet doesn't mean that it isn't. It's anything close to safe, though. Well, it just shows that not everywhere in the world is affluent. <laughs> this is a hostile presence from somewhere. Let's around and see two thugs smirking at me with narrowed eyes. Oh, they're about to die, bitch. Our case is meeting those thugs. A seedy looking large man and a thin man stand before me. Yo, bro! Haven't seen your mug around here. <laughs> Yo, bro! <laughs> Lucky thing we noticed you. Come on, man, spare us some change. He sounds Mexican. <laughs> well, actually, well, well. Wait, he lives in South America, so, well, okay. We just need a little, man. We'll double it in no time in that gambling den over there. You're in my way. Move it. <laughs> Come on, Japanese man. <laughs> Dude, man, you don't understand. You don't, do you know how we do it in Japan, man? Do you know? Everyone's Super Saiyan's over there. Thugs are momentarily stunned by my answer, but their shock quickly dissolves into anger. <laughs> and we were being friendly. I should have pulled this on you at the start. <gasps> Large man's worst proofs up. Up. What? A foolish fusillade? I heard that word before. Fusillade of spittle as he silently whips out what he ble what he believes is his trump card. It's a gun. <laughs> oh yeah, well I got a gun. <laughs> yeah, what you gotta say now? He waves the muzzle in front of my face in a threatening manner. Body like that, and you gotta resort to a gun? Pathetic. Holy shit. Uh oh. To begin with, do I really look like I carry that much money on me? Dude, I don't even have a fucking shirt on right now. <laughs> Ain't you Japanese? Most Asians stupid enough to come waltzing around here are loaded. Come on, give me everything you got, or it's gonna be your brains on the floor. <laughs> It'd be really funny if we saw the two thugs and they look totally. They're like photographs of real people. <laughs> we know you're from Japan, man, because you're all animated and shit. <laughs> Large man. Large man is quite short tempered. Wonder if his mood swings are due to a lack of calcium in his diet. <laughs> I should do it. <laughs> I should talk in the Duke Nukem. 
I guess you really don't get to choose what you eat when you live in a place like this. The large man apparently realizes that he can simply take my cash and I'm dead, and his fat fingers squeeze the trigger before I can reply. Oh, but I dodge it all Matrix style. I grab the bullet with my teeth and throw it back at him. <laughs> I'll rip off your head and shit down your neck. A gunshot rings out and sends a shockwave through the alleys for Eric to drive. Son of a bitch! Archman stands stupefied. He really looks like himself and throws a few more rounds away. Oh my god! What kind of hit? <laughs> what is he, bionic? <laughs> no. Fucking Japanese. It's because I'm dodging his shots. That's the bullets. They obviously me faster than the human body. When a slow man uses a gun, the problem is that he has to point the gun where he wants to send the bullets, and I can see him do it. Just reading his gun movements and getting out of his line of fire before he fires. Fire, or before he shoots, it's that simple. But he thinks there's something wrong with the gun, or that he's not aiming well. Some people, I swear to God. I think it's the embodiment of the phrase, a big head and a little wit. <laughs> and a little penis. <laughs> he never realized, realized what's happening. <laughs> Apparently he never has to reload either. I dodge, a, I dodge a hail of his his hail of bullets and quickly close the distance to my attempted murder. Can you look at his face contorting in fear and confusion? Checkmate. <laughs> Damn. Ooh! Ooh! I'll go BOOM! The whole fucking city just explodes. <laughs> Akahiko! Ah! I strike once, burying my fist into his horsing gut. <laughs> and, his, and, and the guts go out the backside of him. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, Persona 3 took a dark, dark, even darker turn. His body lifts off the ground for a brief moment before it collapses to the ground backwards. Massive impact lifts a huge cloud of dust, and the man doesn't sit, stir from his place on the ground. Ugh, I'm dead. You should be more careful who you pick your fights with. <laughs> yeah, I would avoid the guy who looks like he <laughs> he emerged from the zombie apocalypse or something. <laughs> He's got a big cape on, and also is sporting a fucking six pack. <laughs> Faster! <laughs> The thin man pulls something from his pocket. Heard the loud click of a switchblade being unfolded. Oh, it's always, it always got a knife too. Oh, oh yeah, I dodged a gunshot. I'm sure knives are really gonna help you. Drops through a crouch cold, ready to strike. <laughs> I'm a cobra, you can't get me. At least you know the basics. Damn, dude, Akihiko, I mean, Akihiko was pretty badass, but like, he didn't, I don't know. I didn't think he reveled so much in, in battling. I don't know. I don't know, I guess he did a little bit, but it seems like, holy shit. Now he's like, he is like loving this shit. He's like, oh yeah! Mm. <laughs> Bitch, you ain't got nothing! The reprobate extends his arm and thrusts the deli, deli shining knife towards me in a telegraph attack. <laughs> I, get his, I get inside his arm and swipe the attack angle of the blade out of the way with my right hand and connect my with my left hand under his jaw. This is the text in the... Attacks in the most obvious fashion, and repel attack with the most obvious counter. Uh, I just went to the dentist, Holmes. No! <laughs> the uppercut lands flush, and the man is cast in the air as he utters an undignified scream. I gotta hand it to you for not abandoning your pal. <laughs> Sheesh. I didn't, come on a I didn't come on a journey to waste my time getting into scraps that don't even raise a good warm up. Although, honestly, pretty much all that I had encountered so far in my training was a continuous morass of tedious quarrels. <laughs> I don't have time for this shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is like fucking action movie. Now, up ahead, huh? I noticed that the dust from the fat man's landing has gotten on my cape and I brush it off. <laughs> Damn it. This is, my, this is my favorite cape. Okay, it's actually my only cape, but you're dead for that. So I curb stomp his face in. <laughs> Crunch. Crunching my, fa fa my foot into his face and like crunching a bag of potato chips. Just the way I like it. Mmm, Doritos. This is, the only, this is the only mark that I took from the encounter. Battle injuries will heal over time if they're left alone. But the same can't be said about one's clothing. Fuck. <laughs> Does it look like there's a laundromat here in this city? Damn. That was impressive stuff. Damn. Persona 3 music! This is a song you played every freaking time you return to your dorm. <laughs> so I've heard this song a lot. Someone speaks to me out of the blue, and I glance over and see a man who looks like a bartender hesitantly emerged from a nearby bar. Seems he was watching the whole thing unfold. What a fight! And against a man with a gun? Are you a ninja or something? <laughs> Goddamn right I am. <laughs> nah, that's not important. Where are the police? I'd have thought all the gunfire would catch their attention. I turn response to my bewilderment by laughing in an even more dumbfounded manner. <laughs> Things like that happen all the time. 
The only authority here is the cartel. <laughs> Good. Where's the cartel? I need some drugs. <laughs> Everyone who's not connected dies in poverty. That's been how it works for over 50 years. Jeez, what are you doing here, Augie? So he's coming here to train? <laughs> so he's going to like the... Oh. He's going to like a the dankest, roughest town or something? I see. Those who, are not, those who are not connected. Upon hearing that, a bitter feeling fills up inside me. Everything in this world relies on connections. Connections are just another form of power. People say that what's important can't be obtained by power, but I figure that means the other 99.9% .9 of it is simply a matter of power. It includes one's lifespan. And at, and at times, the lifespan of those close to you as hey, well. Hey, why not stop in for a drink? It's on the house. Seeing what you did made my day. <laughs> Am I even 18 anymore? Uh, how long has it been? Two years. I don't know, yeah, I guess he's probably 18. Wait, no, 20, 21. But no, way, that's in America. So 18, yeah, all right. Partner's cheerful voice snaps me on my own. Are you sure? Me. The cartel you mentioned might not like that. Hey, I'll get off easy compared to you. All I did was offer you a drink, not beat the hell out of their goons. <laughs> drink, you have huh? the good stuff in stock? Huh? It's hard to obtain that certain something around here. I haven't had any for a couple days now. <laughs> Give me some bourbon. Actually. I'm starting to go into withdrawal. <laughs> you're talking about roids, man? <laughs> Holy shit. Well, that explains a lot. What is it you're talking about, mister? Listen, I run a clean bar. Protein. <coughs> Double shot of protein. <laughs> protein. Protein. <laughs> huh? Pro. Make it quick. It's only half as effective 30 minutes after I've burned some calories. <laughs> oh my god. Dude, what the what the hell happened to you? I, oh my god, he's a protein junkie Sorry, now. Sorry, I don't know that brand. Is that some kind of sake? No, it's all right if you no. don't have any. Yeah, a fucking bartender would have protein, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> Sheesh, what am I? What am I thinking? You never know unless you try. But it's pretty stupid of me. Expecting a bartender in a dive bar like this to have protein drinks. Yeah. Shake my head. Damn it. Mmm. I need muscle milk. Muscle milk. <laughs> Shake my, head. shake my head and collect myself. When I finally return to Japan, I'll have to have all the protein my muscle fibers are crying out for. Mmm, biceps. <laughs> Sounds great just thinking about it. Mountains of protein. Protein as far as the eye can see. Tons and t <laughs> tons of white powder. <laughs> Wait, this is not protein. My daydreams of what a wonderful infinite protein would be like are interrupted. When? Ow, oh, motherfucker! Take out my cell phone and see that I've received an email. Three important things on the sub, sub, sub display. First thing is the icon that tells me that the international roaming service is in effect. Second is the name Carisia. I man, sub bitch. <laughs> what did you call me? Uh, I'm sorry. I've I've been I've been training. I'm just kind of I'm kind of pumped him and jazzed him in the mode. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Miss Hero, to hurt me. The last thing is the word urgent. <laughs> Looks like opportunity's knocking sooner than I expected. I can't hide my smirk. Or my fucking six pack. The fact that the message is urgent means that I'm being some for a mission. Me. I haven't found any opponents worth my time here anyway. Dude, what are you doing here? I mean, you have the fight power to fight shadows. It's like, why are you, like, if you're really training, why would you come to, like, the real world town? Go fight the fucking evil demon lords that so shoot fire out of their fucking balls, you know? <laughs> remember that shit, Akahiko? Remember, th remember that? <laughs> Plus, the training journey I was, I'm on was a preparation for these missions. It's my way of showing that I would be suited for taking on these special missions professionally. Oh, okay. Seems that the other... It, either way, I'm, either my plan is working or that this is fate telling me that the time to display my results has come. Must show the world my amazing bot! I can't wait to see what kind of challenge there is in store for me now. Damn. I like they, I, I'm glad they have the same voice actor for Aki Eko. I like I like that guy's voice actor. You guys might recognize him too as the uh, the one of uh, Vince's buddies at the bar, the guy with the hat. I can't remember what his name was. Imagine what this what this unknown enemy could be, and thrust my left fist fairly towards the forward winds, <laughs> and I actually hit the bartender. <laughs> Oops, uh, sorry, my bad. But you got in the way of my manly fist. They'll teach you. And so I curb stop him too. <laughs> Just cause why the fuck not? No. I can't keep my body from trembling with excitement. I plant my fist into my right palm. Mmm. My palm's bleeding now. Just the way I like it. 
<laughs> Holy shit. All right, well, Akiko's taking a big old tasting of badass. I'm up with a can of whip ass. Early morning, May 3rd, Japan. I, I sprinted all the way there <laughs> to Japan. <laughs> and swam a little too. After a flight that took over half a day, I arrived in Japan. After my flight, it always strikes me how cramped the seats are and how boring long flights are. So I, I picked a fight with a random with, my, with a random passenger. That took <laughs> that took that cut the time in half. Considering that we're being placed in a hypoxic environment, it's a waste not to equip these seats with pec decks or give us access to some cardio equipment. Oh my god. So I head towards the arrival lobby while thinking about my ideal airline. Here's something that I haven't heard in a while. Newscasts are reporting in my in my mother tongue. Good morning. Time. It's May 3rd, Constitution Memorial Day. Our top story today is an update on the hijacking two days ago. <laughs> Which sounds a lot like English. <laughs> Also, my mother tongue. <laughs> also, what those other guys were saying. Five men attempted a daring hijacking of a domestic airline. The first such incident in Japan in the 21st century. Police began their official interrogation of the arrested suspects this morning. You know what? I actually remember this uh, being on Use Story too being mentioned. Um, is this somehow connected with Labrys as well? But all depositions have been vague so far, with suspects complaining of muddled memories. Or is it? Psychiatric exams are being considered. Okay, that's a, yeah, it's gotta be. M muddled memories. That must be the incident she mentioned in her email. Ah, yeah, here we go. <laughs> two days in Japan, two days ago in Japan, a jumbo jet bound from Kagashima was hijacked by a group of five men. Hijacking Tim was quickly dealt with because of the hijackers' half-hearted planning, but there was a bigger issue. The unbeknownst to the public, the passenger flight that was hijacked was going to have a very important piece of cargo loaded onto it. Ah, yes! But that, and that's probably Labrys, wasn't it? During the confusion surrounding the hijacking investigation, the cargo seems to have been stolen before it was loaded onto the plane. The hijacking was just a smokescreen for the real crime. Using hijacking as a distraction for a simple cargo theft is pretty daring, but it's also desperate and risky. My mission is to retrieve the cargo from whoever wanted it so badly. This isn't a situation that can be just left to ordinary police. Policemen. This cargo is extremely dangerous and the retrieval has to be done discreetly due to its insensitive nature. I look, to, I look away from the monitor and begin walking ahead. My cell phone immediately begins ringing as if the caller was watching me the entire time and reading my inner monologue. The name is Sierra Carrillo, occurs in the substance display. Sierra Carrillo, she's the one who summoned me here for this mission. I didn't tell her any details about my return flight, but she must have found the information on her own and called out after learning of my flight's arrival. Okay, now if I remember correctly, Miss Sierra's kind of loaded. She's got like she got a very powerful family. Uh, she's still as prepared as ever. Miss Sierra's me. awesome though. It's been a long time, Alkahiko. I'm sorry to call you back on such short notice. <laughs> so, baby. Ah, don't worry about it. I was at a good stopping point. Miss Sierra has been has much greater standing in the group than I, but we've been classmates since the middle school, and she fought alongside me in my biggest battle. I feel like the only reason we were able to pull through that ordeal was that we helped each other back then. So, who's our next enemy? <laughs> Don't be so impatient. You received the brief I sent you, right? What I didn't say directly in it is that the stolen cargo was from Ergo Research. I figured it would be Kiri Joe Group related, with you having to call me back. Uh, I'm not really sure if I recognize that name. Most ordinary people in Japan would have at least heard of the name Kurijo. Kurijo Group. A large conglomerate, one of the few within Japan that can boast a large market share of overseas. Their influence is so ever present that they can touch many aspects of a typical citizen's daily life. Mitsuru is a part of the organization. In fact, she's the only daughter of its founding family. She grew up with untold responsibilities and expectations and has been forced to navigate tumultuous uh, social situations ever since she was young. That is why she has a refined personality, maturity beyond her years, and strong leadership skills. And she's also smoking hot. Although the same circumstances also expose her to the occasional sur surprising lapse in, in naivete. What was inside this cargo? The fifth generation anti-shadow suppression yes. weapon, Labrys. An anti-shadow weapon? Does that mean... Yes, she's one of Igus' sister units. She was sealed at the time of the robbery, but we think it's very likely that she's been activated by now. Ah, okay. Which means there's a good chance there'll be a fight. <laughs> All right. Yeah, this would be too much for the normal authorities. <laughs> I'd be like, what the fuck's going on here? <laughs> okay, so then whoever took her threw her in the TV. For some Sounds like it'll be right up my alley. Of course, this is this TV thing is going to be totally different for these guys. It, so, and for those of you who don't know, in Persona 3, the, there wasn't a TV world, you know? 
know, that's not something they dealt with. They had personas and everything, but their their thing was called the Dark Hour, and it was at midnight every night. The this giant castle would like appear from the ground, and everyone who was living would be like sealed. In, who didn't have a persona would be sealed in the coffins, I believe. And uh, it was like it was it was really funky, but yeah, it was called the Dark Hour, and you had to make your way through Tartarus. So the, the TV thing, that, I'm sure they're gonna be like, "What the fuck is this?" <laughs> Some weird ass shit. Who's that guy? Uh, the man who ran the group two generations ago, Kuetsu Kurisho. He's the founder of the group and also Mitsuru's grandfather. Around ten years ago, the certain resource the man was performing brought about a huge distortion to this world. Oh, the forces that created that distortion were known as shadows. Oh yeah, God, it's it's been a I don't know like Persona Four is, is sort of over like sort of overlap with Persona Three. I've kind of forgotten about that. I guess the best way I could describe them would be to say that these monsters are they are monsters incarnate incarnated of the darkness of the people's hearts. In any case, there's something completely absurd. There's something there's something completely concert, absurd like that. Guetzo Carrillo doing ergo research in what would later be known as the infamous Carrillo Econ economics lab to repeatedly perform inhumane projects. Yeah, that's right. God, I completely forgot about this stuff. He was artificially drawing out shadows in an attempt to gain powers beyond what mortal man should have. But the experiment failed dur during this final, final stages. What remained after the big explosion were over 50 casualties of a distortion of the world that can never be ex repaired. <laughs> Oops. Normal people are completely unable to sense this distortion at all, and yet the same distortion could cause the entire world to collapse. <laughs> ah, fuck. Three years ago, Masuru and I, along with our friends, devoted ourselves to fight in order to end the threat of that collapse. <laughs> there was also a blue-haired guy, named, also named Nico B. <laughs> there he is. There's the protagonist. Although I think his official name is like Minato, something. On the way right there. <laughs> ah, there's Ken and uh, uh, oh, Kame is it Kameda? Is that the name of the dog? I can't remember. Then we got Fuko with little short green hair. Junpei. This is the guy slipping in the back. Uh, Yukari. That's the one with the... To, just the left of that. And there's a left. And then Aki... See, look at... Look at... Aki, it looks... He's not, like, fucking Diesel. Like... And his hair was a little bit longer. Bonds and the precious memories I gained from them are engraved upon my heart and haven't faded to this day. Fighting is not our first option. But I'd be more reassured with you there. We have a general idea of where it was taken. The Inaba area where there were reports of suspected shadow activity last year. Okay, I'll meet up with you at the actual location. Are you heading directly there? You never change. Let me know if you need anything and I'll make the arrangements. Protein. Protein. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> yes! I knew it. What? No, it's better I don't ask. I'll send you the precise <laughs> location later. Sorry to call when you've just returned from a trip, but I'm relying on your assistance. You went to a lot of trouble to create the shadow operatives. I won't do anything to tarnish the name. I'll see you there. Shadow operatives. Whoa. Whoa! <laughs> Says Masir in the middle, I guess. <laughs> Flash, flashing everyone underneath their coach. Like, whoosh! The shadow operatives. This is an organization I'm a part of. We're a joint task force comprised of the Carrizo group and police. Officially, we do not exist. Uh, okay, so... I don't know. I don't recognize who a lot of these people are. I'm guessing... They're all not all people we know. Our main, main mission is to deal with shadow-related cases that police are incapable of handling, and our objective is to prevent the minimize or minimize the collateral damage caused by shadows. Shadows can only be defeated by Persona users. Masuru, myself, and many of the members of the belonging to the Shadow Operators have Persona and knowledge, uh, Persona's and knowledge about them. Masuru is finally dedicating herself to prevent Karija's tainted legacy from falling into the wrong hands. As her, no, is the share the share duty of all of us in the group. I notice I have unconsciously form for my hand to a fist. And I'm bleeding again, but that's alright, just the way I like it. Have a, I have an email from Masuru giving me the details and the meeting location. As usual, she's thoroughly planned this out. Uh, sweet. A smile appears on my face, an opportunity to use all the skills and strength I've been honing. <laughs> I'm going to the countryside. I'm going to punch a fucking cow in the face. <laughs> no, leave cow alone. Leave him alone. He didn't do anything to you. I'll leave. I'll commit every, commit every fire of my being to fulfill the duty I've been given. I couldn't ask for more. Th that cow used to be a chicken. Don't you understand? <laughs> no, wait. That's the wrong game. Akahiko gonna shit on some dudes with his fucking fist. 
don't know how he's doing that, but don't give a shit. Same day, same day, afternoon. I arrive in Inaba earlier than I planned. It's a lot of time to kill before I need to be at the meeting. <laughs> That's weird. I never heard this soundtrack before. <laughs> in order to get get a feel for the town and what's going on, I decided to walk around it for a bit. And from the looks of it, it's an ordinary countryside town. I can't believe that people think a level 4 shadow related case occurred here last year. So I can tell there doesn't seem to be any disturbance going on right now. Except for fucking amazing dealers of Dunez. Holy shit. Looks like that unit named Labras isn't running amok here either. As soon as I surf on the main street a bit, it's mountains and fields as far as the eye can see. I bet mean, everyone's like, the fuck are you wearing, man? <laughs> the air is clean and the traffic is pretty light, so the town has, has that going for it. It's a great place to go running early in the morning. I wait for your evening to come while exploring as much of the town as I can. It's almost time. I keep flutters in the wind as I, and so do my, as my my rock hard abs show off, mm, glisten in the morning light. So I shout, it's a shadow box and jog to the missionary intersection in the, at the outskirts of town, what this town would call its shopping district. Getting up in a rural area like this is a bit of a tricky situation. Since the shadow after operatives do not officially exist, we need to draw as little attention to our mission as possible. Yeah, I'm sure that outfit is not drawing any attention. <laughs> Hopefully we can quickly join up and be on our way so that the residents don't take notice of a bunch of outsiders assembling in their sleepy town. Unfortunately, when I arrive at the meeting point, Masuru and the others are nowhere to Something be seen. Something happened? I doubt she'd run into any trouble she couldn't handle, though. Oh. Legal dump. <laughs> With a big old TV. Enter the area and it's full of all kinds of junk. Carson household appliances, large and small, are piled into small artificial mountains. I test my footing and footing began climbing up to the stack trash. Look, looking down, I spot a long black limousine that's completely out of place in this tiny town. Come to realization inside. <sighs> of course, they'd stand out no matter where they were, so they could only park here. N she had to take a fucking limo. <laughs> Come on, Mister. <laughs> You're loaded. You can get some other shit. Two of my friends standing by are standing by in the limousine. Hey, I guess. A woman decked down in a fur coat and a mechanical a mechanical girl. It's Masur and I guess. Before I call out to them, I guess does something bizarre. She extends her right arm towards the TV screen in front of her, and hmm? I guess hand is passing right through the screen. Her still fingers aren't just breaking the TV screen. They're definitely going inside. Ooh, it's the the Tartarus song. Ba, ba, ba. <laughs> ba, ba. It's the song you ever, whenever you go to the lobby of Tartarus, they play this song. Uh, concentric rings of white light are rippling forth from where she inserted it's her hand. It's the same as mine. It's hard to say definitively since this is my first encounter with it, but I believe this reading is from a personality module. Does that mean our retrieval target is inside the TV? I don't understand how or why, but it seems that people can enter the TV. In that case, it would be a perfect place to hide stolen cargo. That makes huh. sense easier. Sounds like fun. I wonder if, I mean, I guess since they're Persona users, it's it's really weird though, because they did they got their powers in a totally different manner, you know. Uh, well, I, actually, I don't know. They never really do. They go into much detail about how we get our, how they get their powers in Persona Three. They don't really do they. They just kind of like can do it, you know. Uh, yeah. People join the group who already have like that ability. I think. So, yeah, it's not really explained, but I guess since they have that power, they can enter the TV. Two of them look up surprised. Is that Akihiko? <laughs> oh, God. I coughed in their direction. I leap off the mountain of trash and land for You didn't them. show up at the rendezvous point, so I went looking and found you here. <laughs> this whole TV thing is pretty interesting. Got a big X on your head, Akihiko. Akihiko, what on earth are you wearing? Just what were you doing overseas? <laughs> yeah, seriously. Hmm? Didn't I tell you that I was on a training expedition? I know, man, but you look kind of ridiculous now. Don't tell me you came here from the airport like that. Does the concept of keeping a low profile mean nothing to you? Yeah, this is the person who's wearing a fur coat and in a limousine. She can glance at Monsieur until she's summoning up her coldest stare. This clothing allows me to have much better mobility, but I don't think Monsieur is going to listen to my explanation. Mitsuru san. I believe we have lost the right to complain about that. Yeah, yeah. I think Mr.'s clothing, once again, I couldn't help but sigh. Because I guess I already voiced what I wanted to say. I decided not to make a comeback. 
I know, I guess you probably should have worn like a coat or something. <laughs> at least tied your arms, everybody would be like, what the fuck? And Sir simply shakes her head and sighs back at me. Ser seriously, this is what happens when you grow up in a wealthy family, sheltered from the lies that normal anyway. people. Say my less fist in my right palm. I like the sister in your lap rest. She's apparently inside a TV in an obscure part of the countryside. Gotta wonder, what else will we be waiting we for? We can get inside? inside from that TV, right? What are we waiting for? What are we waiting for? Still the same Akihiko. We don't know the situation inside yet, and we'll need a secure means of getting out. So what? If we want to get this Labrys back, someone has to go inside, right? Well, I guess he is kind of the same Akihiko. Just... or Diesel. Well, that's... Our target hijacked a plane to throw her into a TV in this town. If we sit on our hands, it's possible we'll be put in serious danger. I like us with Miss Sur and take a step towards her. We're different from how we used to be. We made the choice to fight shadows as professionals. <laughs> I'll get a paycheck now. That's why I traveled around the world and trained harder than ever. And now that something's actually come up, you're hesitating? We agreed to do this. I'm ready to stake my life on the mission. Three years ago, okay. I had I had said that it was my duty to help in the fight, but looking back on it on now, I know that a lot of it was just for kicks. See myself def def definitively become much stronger and experiencing all that personal growth was incredible. Become stronger felt like it would be satisfy some deep desire within me. If I die giving my all against a really powerful opponent, I didn't really mind the thought of going out like that either. I was honestly fighting for myself more than anything else. But now, something's changed in my balls. And I wandered around, wandered around the world with something in the back of my mind constantly nagging me, something about not having a grasp of some part of myself. I know that I want power. The power to protect others. But that feeling has always been there. There's still something else, though. Something different. Protein! <laughs> a few seconds of silence pass, and Sue's eyes narrow. Her eyes are filled with a steely determination. All right. Wait right here. I need to go make a phone call first. Okay. But make it quick. I'm gonna order a pizza. <laughs> Fists are ready for action. Oh, who cutscene? The other members will wait here in the car. Yeah. If we all barge in and something happens, we'll be devastated. Now that you mention it, at least one of us should be staying behind as well. I guess the I rest am not of them staying. Should... I guess the rest are the group from last <laughs> from Persona 3, I guess. <laughs> us three will be plenty. We'll end this in a flash. No problem. <laughs> the same as always. Although, huh? we have no idea what might be waiting for us on the other side. Don't get careless. Right. <laughs> This situation, it brings back memories. <laughs> Shit's about to get real. Ready! <laughs> I got that a big old TV out there. Welcome to Persona 4. Mm. Oh. Why enter the TV? What's going on? There's Naruto. Hi, Naruto. I see, so she's been following them around. Guess that's why when you unlock the, you have you unlocked her story as well. Hey! Right open my eyes again. The first thing I can see in is a high ceiling. Here's my feet and look around. Basketball hoops, the ground line with white tape and a folding ch and folding chair stacked high into the is air. Is this a gym? I'm seeing now isn't matching what I expected to see. If my memory's correct, I entered the TV Masur and I guess. So what's the inside the TV? Sweet. High school dramas. <laughs> It's me. This isn't reality. Everything looks extremely real, but I sense odd presence nearby. I brace myself in inside this oddly quiet gym. If I'm the only one here, I must be cautious. Alone? So I realize that Misuru and Agus should be here too. They came to the TV with me, but they're nowhere to be seen. 
Did we get separated from each other as we were falling in? No, it's more likely they were separated intentionally. Well, I don't really need to worry about them. I'm pretty sure that we'll be able to handle anything in there in here on their own. If something does attack them, those two will just counterattack with icicle ex executions and machine guns. <laughs> this feeling in the air reminds me of somewhere, though. Yeah, Akihiko was uh, lightning based. Uh, Mitsuru is ice based, and then I guess had machine guns. <laughs> well, I guess had like physical attacks and stuff. I felt this harsh atmosphere before. I dig through my memories. Right, this is what Tartars felt like. Ah, okay, cool. The tower full of shadows where we did battle three years ago. Okay, three years. Okay, it's three years. Got it. Since the series unfamiliar and I'm assuming hostile, there's no knowing when an enemy might attack. Waiting around to get ambushed isn't really my thing. <laughs> I don't have time for this. It's time for me to get moving. Just as I think that. Ah! What in the world is that? A bizarre object approaching even further instead of the Oh no, it's Teddy! I'm assuming real, real Teddy too. Only real Teddy can make a squeaky sound like that when he walks. <laughs> oh no. Oh no, don't attack him, Akihiko. Leave him alone. <laughs> no. Uh, I wouldn't imagine you'd walk into the, I mean, the fake one yet. It's red, blue, and red. <laughs> no, no, don't hurt him. On top of that, it's walking on two feet. Water all across the globe in different regions, but I've never seen a bizarre creature like this. There's a weird <laughs> guy in a cape. <laughs> <laughs> Weirder still, it's able to communicate with me. <laughs> you're, you're gonna fucking die. <laughs> no! <laughs> what did I do? Uh, you think you've got the right to call me weird? <laughs> you seem suspicious. How rude! Hm? I'll say the same back to you. Being half naked and wearing a cape <laughs> is totally suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Teddy. Uh, could this be the pervert I've heard rumors about? <laughs> My innocence is in danger! <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> You're making no sense at all. Who are you? Oh, don't tell me. Are you a shadow? <laughs> well, technically I am, but but hold on a second! <laughs> now you die! Ah! <laughs> huh? I'm Teddy! Teddy! So you are a shadow. I just said I'm Teddy! Teddy! It's easy! Uh, no bare ass fur that color. Or can talk. How cruel! I'm an adorable, sexy beast, no matter what angle you're looking from! <laughs> Teddy? Teddy? Does that mean he's like a bear or something? <laughs> Sup, losers! <laughs> Suddenly a monitor nearby springs to life. What appeared on the te on it was also red, blue, and round. Oh my god, what kind of fucked up Disney movie am I in? <laughs> it's another bear thing. Or to be exact, it was also Teddy Teddy. I can't have you wandering about on your own. You're such a troublesome bear. You're the troublesome one! How dare you do whatever you want while looking like me! It's a violation of my image rights! <laughs> I'm gonna sue your punk ass! What's going on? Are you twins or something? Huh? I discovered an unknown half-naked caped man! <laughs> <laughs> Actually, if you just think about like coming in here as Akihiko, imagine I run into a world full of blue bears. <laughs> oh my god, it's this, it's that Smurf episode all over again. No, does that mean I'm Garglamesh or whatever the hell that guy's name was? An intruder, uh, unexpected, uh, unex, 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 ex, ex. Uh, he's like, uh, oh, the Mario pops back on again. Let's get it. Was Teddy, Teddy, Teddy's. Ugh, this is too confusing. I'm just gonna refer to the TV as Bear as Bear 2. I'm in some crazy TV world, so I'm just gonna assume that these guys are Japanese. <laughs> oh, oh no, I saw, I'm not just gonna assume that these guys are okay. <laughs> I kinda like the way I said it the first time better. <laughs> I'm in some crazy TV world, so I'm just gonna assume these guys are Japanese. <laughs> That would have been awesome. Case zero four, unintended intruder, entering elimination process. <laughs> I don't know exactly what's going on, but I've seen enough. Looks like you're the enemy here, bear number two. As for you, Teddy Teddy, he seems to be your enemy too. But well, why don't you step down and let me handle him? Fuck your shit, motherfucker! I got bear claws. Stick that missile up your butthole if you don't watch it! 
She had to walk off in search of the announcement room. But no way. What? But I mean, who are you? You haven't even told me your name. And that bear might be a bad guy who tricked my beloved sensei and friends. I can't leave this in the hands of a half-naked cape man like you. <laughs> he keeps calling him Teddy Teddy. <laughs> Teddy Teddy looks surprisingly resolute as he refuses my offer. Is he friends of his own that he's trying to desperately protect too? Well, your costume is strange. I do like that fire in your eyes. What's that supposed to mean? It sounds perverted coming from a half-naked cave guy. <laughs> hey, I have a name. It's Akihiko Sonata. You don't have to call me half-naked cape guy. <laughs> and I know I can't prove I'm on your side just by saying so. So judge for yourself whether I'm worthy of your trust. In the ring. <laughs> You're that excited to do this? <laughs> You're damn right I am. Fists don't lie, you know? Now come on. Just like hips. you everything I got. <laughs> My fist in front of me and focus. Hmm. One does not face their cowardice, they cannot summon a persona. That's why persona users used to have to undergo the trial of evo holding an evoker to their heads. Ah, alright. But that was simply a ritual that overcomes one's psychological blocks. It isn't required to step in handle handling personas. Ah, okay. Cool, good to know. Yeah, like in the third game, in Persona 3, you had to take a gun, essentially, and point it to your head and to summon your persona and shoot yourself. <laughs> The resolution has always, always been within me after Come, all. Come, Persona! Hurr! Yeah, he's got Caesar! Caesar! I actually practiced a little bit with Ahigo uh, so I could use him. He's, he's actually pretty He's pretty cool. I, I, it was pretty fun to play as him. It's this power rising from deep within me. Mm. Holy, holy shit, what's happening right now? <laughs> is this a crossover? You're damn right it is. Mmm, <laughs> ready now, my fist of fury. What did I do? Why does everyone want to fight me? I'm gonna fight Disney. Fuck you, Disney. I'll show you how cute and, cute and nice are with my fists. Let's go! What did you do? Come on, my gut. Ah. Ow. I don't like that. Urgh. I can't see myself. Uppercut. Watch this. Woo! 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 Uppercut. <laughs> Stop punching me in the face! Stop it! No. <laughs> Ow! Stop punching me in the nose! God damn it! Ah. <laughs> Sorry, Teddy. Still love you, though. I don't understand why we learn from the this. The intruder is a persona user. Difficulties in elimination. Acknowledging as valid target. Persona user? You talking about me? What do you mean by valid target? Irregularity has occurred. Multiple intruders detected. Emergency. Emergency. Oh, I know! Uh. I've just had a fun idea! <laughs> hey, Teddy Teddy. Wake up. No! Kanji! You're crushing me to death! <laughs> What's going through with this guy's Teddy, head? Teddy, wake up! <laughs> this kid's calling him Teddy Teddy. Smack Teddy Teddy a little more forcefully this time. I was worried that it might make him even flatter, but that's the risk I'm willing to take. <laughs> <laughs> he actually is this flat for. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh no, I poofed all the air out of him. <laughs> Looks like that did the trick. Teddy Teddy gets up. Using whatever weird stomach muscles he had, <laughs> he has, and yells at me like, "Well, it's still in the flattened state." Hey! If you hit me so hard, you'll ruin my beautiful coat of fur. I'll go bald. <laughs> and it's just Teddy, not Teddy Teddy. It's getting to be a pain. Teddy purses his lips, and looks at, looks away with a huff. I wanted to demonstrate my sincerity with my fist. No doubt, doubt that did that. Then again, considering how badly flattened he is right now, I guess it, 
it's understandable that he doesn't want to talk to me. <laughs> Seeing how badly I beat the shit out of him, well... Well, maybe I went a little too far. <laughs> Sorry. Let me at least talk to you. I have important business here, too. I need as much information as I can get. Aren't you going to say sorry? Don't push your luck, or I'll pull out all your fur. What? I was just joking! <laughs> well, I am a knowledgeable bear, so I'll make an exception for you and listen. First off, what kind of world is this? This? It's the TV world. Well, at least I was right about that. Teddy Wynn went on to explain there is a mysterious TV program called The Midnight Channel that only appears at midnight. And that TV broadcast is caused by this world inside a TV. <laughs> He's like, God, why is it always at fucking midnight? What's wrong with midnight? <laughs> that... <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh! <laughs> Here, it seems, it seems that Teddy's back to his original parents, or rather his original thickness. <laughs> it's like a big stress ball. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Weird. It's <laughs> hard to believe. But even if that's true, why does it look like this? Is this supposed to be a school or something? This is probably the school that Yosuke and the others go to. It's a real place? This world changes whenever someone comes here. I'm not sure why it's a school now, though. It changes when people come here. I used to live here for a long time, so I saw it happen a lot. You lived here? Well, does that mean you're from this world? What are you? <laughs> That's, uh... <laughs> He starts climbing up all of a sudden. I started getting nervous when I blurted out the realization that he was living in this world and that he wasn't human. First about being different from humans, huh? Definitely doesn't look human, but it's easy enough to overlook because he's able to carry easily carry on a conversation with me. And his fist definitely had heart. <laughs> he definitely had heart in the power of his cards or whatever the fuck it was. Alright, so immediately springs to mind. She's a machine, but she also has the same heart as a person. Those Teddy creature may be some kind of costume creature. He must have a heart as well. I say he does look. <laughs> that being said, he does look pretty stupid. <laughs> hey! Hey! There's so much I don't understand. But I can at least say I'm pretty sure you're no threat. Of course not. I'd never cause anyone any trouble. Unless it was for boobies. If it was for boobies, then I'm gonna cause a lot of trouble. Ah! Pretty loves to some boobies. If you know this world so well, does the name Fifth Generation. Um, Labrys sound familiar? I've never heard of it. Every day's great at Juness. Uh, I usually spend my time there. But when I came Walmart to, did. I was locked up here. I managed to escape, though. Only to find that an imposter Teddy was causing a bunch of trouble with his P1 Grand Prix. He <laughs> was bummed out a minute ago, and now his face is bright red, and there's some steam pouring out of his head. <laughs> Was he Majin Buu? <laughs> this guy's a real piece that of guy work. Who showed up on screen looked exactly like you. He calls himself a general, but don't confuse me for that phony. The real Teddy is made of all natural bear fur. If that was someone in disguise, there must be a reason he's trying to look like you. Ooh, I know. It must be because he's jealous that Sensei and everyone love me the most. <laughs> but he's not one one millionth as cute as me. Anyone can tell he's a fake. All right, one last question. You said you used to live here. Do you know how to get out? Of course. That was one of my specialties. I always helped other people when they needed to leave. But it's not working here for some reason. I'm losing my confidence. This is one bear of a headache. Ooh, that was an advance. <laughs> 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 All right, I'm gonna. Uh, damn it, I'm gonna kill you again. <laughs> this is no laughing matter. We won't be able to get out like this. That's it. You're coming with me. I'm assuming that I'm probably gonna need this guy's help in getting out of here later, so I grab the back of Teddy's head and sprint forward. <laughs> no, no! Just as I'm about to exit the gym, Teddy gets completely stuck on something. <laughs> Come on, Teddy, stop being a goober! No! Stop it! No! <laughs> Damn it, Teddy, I swear to God! <laughs> Look behind me, Teddy's wildly flailing his arms around. I don't see anything holding him back. What the? What kind of trick is this? You almost made me lose my head! I have to zip it back on again! Ignoring the huge fuss Teddy's making, I reach over towards where he's stuck. I don't feel anything. I guess I'll have to try again. <laughs> look, look at Augie's face. Uh, mm. Whack the head, back of Teddy's head towards me with my full strength. <laughs> Simply stuck on something. For a moment, it looked like the zipper on Teddy's deck warped. Whatever, whatever. It's probably my imagination. 
Looks like there's a wall that I can get through, but you can't. The bizarre place this is. Says the half-naked cake guy who pulled in my head so hard it almost came off! Oh well, Do it. I'll have to leave you here. Make sure you don't go anywhere alone, you hear me? I won't let you abandon me! I get lonely real fast! I'm coming with you! You! <laughs> <laughs> Enormous crash reverberates throughout the area. Aren't you around? I see a flat and teddy fluttering on the ground like a sheet of paper or falling off a desk. He's gotten a running start and slammed right into whatever he's there in full force. He just went straight into an invisible wall at first without even thinking about how much that would hurt. <laughs> uh, this guy said the journal is an enemy of his friends. Because of his friends that are at risk, he can't just leave everything to me. It's lack of regard for personal safety, maybe because he's so worried about his friends. Oh, Teddy's loved. Teddy's the best. He behaves oddly, but once you look past that, I can totally empathize with him. Uh, sorry. I'll come back for you when all this is settled. You better don't die! I think I, Teddy, I know it's a tough situation. I heard where the enemy is for my mission for the sake of Teddy and his friends. Bye, Teddy, love you. I land near a classroom that seems to be half underground. I look through one of the windows, and though the interior is odd, it looks like it's a music room. The window's closed, but it's still just a glass window. If there was real school, I'd hesitate to do this, but hey, this is a fake world, so whatever. We're back, put my fist through the window. Ooh! Ow! Whoa! What the? Who are you? <laughs> Buff young man. <laughs> Who are you? You sound like Troy Baker. <laughs> Kanji, what are you doing here? <laughs> There's another visitor inside of the room. He's well bit young, young man in a school <sighs> uniform. You're that guy from the video. Did you just come falling from up there? What's going on? Answer me! I remember now. You're the... The blood-curdling beefsteak emperor. <laughs> <laughs> Hell no! Come on! Did you even try to remember my name? So that P1 <laughs> Grand Prix thing has already started. Hey, take off your clothes. <laughs> take off your clothes. <laughs> it starts playing that music. What the hell? How can you ask that straight out? <laughs> What's wrong with what I said? Won't it be hard to maneuver wearing that? Maneuver? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's do this. Let's get naked. Let's get all flustered. His face is revenue. He's not just he's just not feeling well. What are you all flustered for? I'm talking about your jacket. If you don't wear it right, it'll get in your way during the fight. Oh, my jacket? You just said that to begin with? <laughs> no real meaning behind this. It's like just the way I wear it. That's <laughs> plain weird. Says the guy who's half naked except for a cape. <laughs> God, why do people keep saying that? <laughs> you must fight whoever you're paired with. Now get started. I understand that, but I can't attack someone who doesn't have the urge to fight. I don't know if spur her mom, but his expression is completely different than it was before. The redness is she's is gone. There's a fire in his eyes that almost seems murderous. Ah, wow, looks like there's no need for me to worry after all. Keep saying the weirdest crap. Looks like I'll have to make you leave. Let's get this started, KP. <laughs> who are you calling KP? <laughs> What, now you're interested? Alright, come and get me. You're not really strong anyway. Just a fake. I've been worthy about it. What's that supposed to mean? Shut up! Try to ask yourself that. Here he goes. Ah, uh, okay, now he's saying shit that. Now he's being controlled by. Dab, uh, Labrys is totally doodly. There can be only be one character that fights with his fists in game and has lightning attacks. <laughs> oh yeah! I'll show you. Show you, Kanji. There's more than one Troy Baker out there. Finally! Oh, damn it! Damn it! Too easy! Nothing! Has he even hit me yet? Ah, oh, damn it! I did now. I was feeling pretty good. Oh, I'm like healing myself a little bit, aren't I? A little blue bar, like I heal myself a little? Maybe. <laughs> the two-fisted protein junkie. I just, I just noticed that. I kind of like Akiko. 
like uh, fire guys. Huh. Amazing. So this is what you meant by going at it with nothing to hide. When did I say that? You're one passionate guy. Guess you're no ordinary pervert. Oh, since when am I a pervert? Uh, Contra flashes a bright smile that's different from the one he displayed before the fight. Anger and hatred have fled his body entirely now that the fight is over. Seems like he's got spirit. Oh, yeah, for a dream, it sure hurts. <laughs> he's still calling it a dream. Huh? That's weird. I'm a dude I've never met before is here in my dream. A dream? What are you talking about? Aren't we inside the TV world? Huh? The TV world. If you can dream with your eyes open, I'm pretty impressed. What? You're inside the TV? <laughs> I seriously thought this was all a dream! Hey, do you have any idea who the other people in that video were? They were pretty much all my friends, but... Oh, crap. I thought this was a dream, so I kinda sorta beat the snot out of a couple of them. <laughs> <laughs> you goes like, Damn it, Kanji! Well, if they lost to someone who was half asleep, they'll just have to suck it up. You know, have to suck it up. Stop being little bitches. You think so? Things are just that black and white to you, huh? Wait, this isn't a dream. And Ted and Reese are really hosting it? General Teddy. The other Teddy said that he was a fake. A fake? You're kidding me. How do you make such a perfect copy of the bear suit? <laughs> That's the part you're hung up on? But yeah, yeah. They're hardly twisted bastards who enjoy watching friends crush each other. You seem Nick. pretty sure of your friends. <laughs> Man, the things I went through with those guys. And here I thought you were a pervert who wasn't listening to a word I said. Guess I had you figured wrong. Looks like this guy's having a having a tough enough time just changing the way he thinks about me. <laughs> Maybe he's just an idiot. <laughs> the way his expression changes into that honest, relieved look when he talks, he's talking about his friends. He's like his friends that he can really trust. If we met under less dangerous circumstances, I wouldn't mind sitting around chatting with him for a bit. But I have a duty to attend to right By now. By the way, you like you lighting attacks? Name Labrys anywhere? <laughs> you like shooting lighting out of your hands? Me too. She's supposed to be somewhere in here. Huh? Labrat? What? <laughs> I see. Uh, if you don't know, don't worry about it. <laughs> Labrat. La I let you kanji me and walk towards the door. How she calls out stop? Hey, wait a second. You haven't told me anything about you. Who are you? What did you come inside the TV for? There's no point in explaining. What? He tends to stop me, but he changes his mind. Christian tells me that he's not satisfied with this outcome, but he swells his frustration to see on the ground. Since he's fought against a number of people already, he must understand that he can't proceed on because he lost. How do you look directly in my eyes and speaks well, up? I was the loser here, so I can't complain. This isn't a dream, and my friends are in trouble. That's all you need to say. I answer with I a smile. I won't let anything happen to him. <laughs> the way you fought says it all. You can't throw punches like that without a shitload of training. Feel your determination behind every one. Yeah, the same's true for you. Good work. <laughs> oh, oh man, we got a serious bromance going here. <laughs> I freaking love you, man. <laughs> Raise exchange after trying to beat each other senseless. You have a moment of, that only those who have brawled against each other can share. Oh yeah. <laughs> Dude, we're gonna go out for a fucking milkshake after this. <laughs> Hell yeah! Mm! <laughs> Chock full of protein! Kanji skills are exceptional for a high school student. When I was in the boxing club, there were only a handful of guys who could stand to trade blows with me like he just did. Considering that he's this good with self-taught fighting skills, there's no question that he'd become an unparalleled fighter if he had uh, proper training. You should be careful. My friends are hella strong, you know? If you're not careful, you'll be eating pavement. Is that supposed to be a genuine warning for me, or was that a boast about how great his friends are? Either way, I can understand the feeling behind his words, so I smile back at him. <laughs> I don't know about that. My fists can't be stopped that easily. Something more I need to say to Kanji. Turn and begin running down the hallway. All right, who's he fighting now? Akihiko, you're all right. Oh, all right. Then again, seeing you isn't necessarily cause for celebration. If we're both here in one place, that means. Yeah, looks like it. So, you're my next opponent. <sighs> this is exactly what the enemy wanted. Monsieur makes this bitter declaration. The monitor into the classroom turns on. I already know who I'd be seeing. It's the general. God dang doodly. Ta da! Well, this is about to get real interesting. An unwanted battle between friends. I hope you two enjoy it to the fullest. <laughs> is that supposed to upset us? Can you believe this guy, Mitsuru? Hm. 
It certainly is an unwanted battle between friends. I have no intention of fighting against Masuru. But we both understand what needs to be done in order to accomplish the mission. There's no way we would allow a little something like this to shake our resolve. But either when I look back towards Masuru, I see her looking at me with pity. Uh-oh. <laughs> ah, shit. She's about to start talking smack. I'm sorry, Akihiko. I believe I may have driven you into a corner. Huh? What do you mean? I should have realized much sooner. It's not strength you truly desire. What you really want is to forget your fear of losing others. That's why you throw yourself so fervently into your training. It's a twisted form of escape. At the very least, you can allow me to put an end to such things. But Forget my fear of losing others, huh? Sir well knows I have lost countless things until now. An anxiety I buried somewhere in my heart may strike me at any moment. But Masuru, I know, wouldn't bring up something like that at a time like this. It'd be obvious to any friend of Masuru. There's something hmm. going on here. Teddy, Teddy, and Kanji also started getting personal before the fight. <laughs> Taste to call to Teddy, Teddy again. Is this some kind of trick? I've got no idea what you're talking about. Sounds to me like she means it. <laughs> I don't know what you're up to here, but you're gonna have to try harder. That's fine, though. I'll just take this chance to enjoy some serious sparring. <laughs> Uh, he was like, don't give a fuck. Those who encounter one another must fight, and the only victory may, only the victory may proceed. This, since this rule stands, we're gonna have to, we gotta fight. We removed any choice we had. In the face there were a bunch of people again. I wanted to fight once I got back to Japan, to test my skills. And you were at the top of the list, Mitsuru. <laughs> Didn't think I'd get a chance so soon, though. <laughs> Kakarot! <laughs> Mitsuru takes your stance without saying a word. Tension of battle seems, sends a tingle through all the muscles of my balls. Here goes, Akihiko. Come and get me, Mitsuru! Then we just grab each other and start making out. <laughs> Woo! Wasn't expecting that! Ah! Uh, <laughs> Whoa! Uh, wait, are they fighting? I. Oh, holy shit! Oh, damn! Damn! It's getting hot and steamy in here! Ooh! Monokuma shows up too. He's like, Scoot over, General! It's my turn to watch! Are you? Get out of here! Who are you? I don't know. I'm coming for the show! I passed the popcorn! <laughs> Oh, this is so sexy stuff, baby! Alright, Misuru. It is time. Oh, snap, look at you. Damn, you look like a badass, too. <laughs> 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 Oh, perfect, baby! Oh no, I did. I got hit. I got hit. Look at that! Look at that little tiny bit of sliver of health I lost. Damn it! I almost got a perfect. I don't know how she did it. She must have farted on me or something. Uh, it hurts. Uh, the fart burns. Damn! I could. You are strong as fuck, though. Battle's over. Glance down at Siru. She keeps her firm expression uh, over her mouth. I yield. Your skills have improved tremendously, Akihiko. Yours too. I was really worried there that you might execute me. Masura gives a smirk. That's Masura, I know. So our behavior prior to the fight was all general's work. Masura, I wonder. What did I say to you before the fight? Huh? Why do you ask? As I recall, you said some unkind things about my late father. I knew it. Of course, I have no memories of saying such things because I didn't say them. The general's probably guessing to kind of trick the worst of opponent's reality so the good friends will hate each other. Maybe it was all an illusion? I don't understand how it all works, but there's one thing I'm absolutely certain of. The sewer not turned towards the monitor smugs and a smugly smile at the general. This little gimmick was completely useless. General can, Teddy can barely contain his hatred as he has a response. How can you fight without holding back like that? People hesitate more when they face their friends. They break down. They suffer! So how come you aren't suffering? Why? I don't understand! I'm not surprised. Anyone who needs to trick people to get his way wouldn't understand. Our bonds aren't that flimsy. Fuck yeah. The general glo gla glowers at us. The communication cuts off. Suffer, huh? The general was going on about making us suffer earlier. Is that why he wants to let... But has this all fighting here to make us suffer? But then why would he still okay, laugh? Let's compare notes. I want to confirm our situation. Right. Although I don't have much for you. Did you find Labrys? 
Aiga seems to have made contact with her. She seems to be calling herself the student council president of the school. Uh, In fact, she's going so far as to play the part. Play the part? She seems to be unaware that she entered a TV. It's possible that someone forced her in here, but that doesn't explain why she's acting out a role in school life. No idea what that could be. What that could be about right now. This place is school, but it's still just a copy of a school in another world. What kind of school life and could possibly be here? I heard a strange voice. I'm not certain, but it's most likely Labrys. Either her inner thoughts or her memories. It was a voice of deep sorrow, suffering, sadness. It was so vivid I wanted to cover my ears. Monsieur cast down her eyes as if we're living the pain. A great portion of Ergo's research data was lost because of the actions of a former researcher. He was the mastermind behind the events three years ago. All this must be mortifying for Masuru. That man is the reason her fire family was taken from her. Yeah, that guy, right? I think he used to be the leader of the group originally. I think. And, yeah. Or no, it might have been another guy. But he ended up, ended up going crazy, if too. If that was truly Labrys, then she's practically human. She may not be that far behind Igus in terms of mimesis. Sure, Igus's sister unit would have a mind. Does that mean the older version is more advanced? Doesn't seem likely, but I can't say for certain. Still, I'm only speculating, but I feel like her deeply negative emotions are connected to this tournament. Connected how? Hmm. Do you really think Labrys was stolen? The General seemed to want to make us suffer rather than eliminate us. Would a thief wish for that? Or draw in unrelated high school students? I see. That General Teddy's actions do seem in line with what Labrys wants. He actually may in fact be Labrys. It's possible that Labrys regained consciousness much earlier and escaped when she was being transported. Can't deny that possibility right now. But there's something else I do Mitsuru, know. you're doing your brow furrowing thing again. What? That doesn't matter right now. You're <laughs> overthinking things. All this conjecture and speculation will drive you nuts. Let's pick this up again once we defeat the enemy. Sue's always been like this. She imagines the worst case scenarios that haven't happened yet and burdens of herself coming up with contingency plans based on them. Even though she doesn't necessarily stop moving forward, it does certainly does wear her down. Sometimes we need that hard-headedness, but there's time and a place <laughs> for it. Ever think that maybe it's you who's underthinking things? Uh, anyway, there's no time to lose right now. You know where the enemy is, right? Yes, I've traced its location. It should be nearby. I will leave the rest to you, Akihiko. Don't disappoint me, all right? As Masuru said those words, her expression softens a bit. Seems that I've been able huh. to reach her. Of course not. Masuru's grown as well. She's changed since that battle three years ago. I think about a lot of time has passed since then. None of us have remained standing in, this, in, standing in the past. We've all changed. Time to go kick monkey ass now. Bar with ways with Masuru and hurry on ahead. According to Masuru's search, the enemy seems to be nearby. The enemy is waiting for their encounter with us as well. well that's one wish I won't mind granting at all. So I reach the top of the stairs, a loud noise pun punctuates the atmosphere. Someone on a rampage with their persona? No, that's not it. Sort of saying that a massive object creates upon impact. Here it again, coming from the room ahead. The numbers of walls are preventing from making my way towards the sound. I finally reached the my destination. Room. Here we go. Uh, here we go. Monitors in the PA system must have been controlled from this room. I grab the door handle, but we're open. This is different from those visible walls, however. It's just an ordinary door. Sorry if there's a broadcast going on, but I'm gonna punch my way in. <laughs> Bow, come on. <laughs> Smash my way through the door and enter the room. It's that red cape guy I saw earlier. Hi, GA. Ever saw him immediately whistle around to face me? There are two female students before, and one of them recognize I recognize from the video, and the other one is an unfamiliar face. It's my first time seeing her, but I immediately know who she is. She looks like a regular person, except from all the mechanical parts. It's Labrys. And General Teddy! So it wasn't Labrys after all. Gen me and General Teddy is glaring me against a change. Up. Oh. And then we see a little cutscene, right, where he... Hey, 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 okay, yeah. <laughs> Transforms into the evil Sarado Labrys. The, shadow. The, the true self. self. He's like, what? <laughs> this isn't what happened. No, no, that's you're doing it all wrong. <laughs> Another Labrys. Well, this is completely unexpected. <laughs> Holy shit! Look at a, that fucking hole I punched in the wall. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> Can you come up with a reason for me to 
what reason for why something like this would occur? Maybe this is another one of the, those illusions? No, if that were true, what I'm assuming would be a more direct assault on my inner thoughts. Start inventing and discarding possible reasons for what's happening. Eventually, I just cast out all my th my theories. I take a deep breath and calm myself. What is my objective? I summon to retreat blabbers and prevent any danger from spreading. Doesn't matter if there's one, two, or twenty of her. My initial objectives are ineffective, and I will give everything I have to complete right. my mission. I'll just calm them both down. I taunt both of them as they maliciously stare daggers at me. Time to murder some punk ass bitches. Ah, damn it! <laughs> oh, you don't, no, you don't, motherfucker. To be continued. All right, there we go. Labyrinth story. All right, I believe once I've completed Labyrinth story, I can go past the to be continued. I think how it works is like, I, I looked up online like, like how it unlocks. So I think you you beat hers and then, uh, you unlock. You can you can do get past to be continues for all the Persona Four characters. Then you do one of those, and then you can go past the Persona Three ones, and then you do that, and then you unlock one last story. So, um, yeah. All right. Well, at least we can finally understand what happened with Labrys, and then we can finally get past the to be continues. But anyway, I hope you all are enjoying. Um, I'm I am. It's cool seeing all these characters again, and I know there's I'm seeing. Yeah, I do see a bit of overlap. But I do feel like they are distinct enough. I guess if you sort of take each story as separate stories, um, and like, I guess sort of pretend like they're the main character, you know, you can kind of roll with it. I do understand the frustration though, because there is that like, like, because they're all, all these stories are going on totally different. They're all, I mean, while the, the main thing that Labrys is in the TV, we need to stop her, how it's proceeding is totally different with each person, you know? So, uh, yeah, you know, I can understand sort of like like which one's the canon plot, you know, um, but I guess if you sort of like prepare yourself for that, it's more reasonable. I think in the uh, the Ultimax one, the story I believe is more like actually from different perspectives. I think I don't think it's like uh, it is here, but I'm not sure. <laughs> um, anyway. Like for if you enjoy, subscribe now to become a picky big one aboard the SLP. Days are always sunny, and the days are always funny. Until next time, guys, stay classy.